A train misses a red signal. A collision follows. Today, the same mistake, nothing happens. Not because the drivers improved, but because systems intervened. Every beep, bell, warning light, and the radio in a driver's cab, it costs someone their life first. In this video, we're exploring how Britain's biggest railway disasters have led to the safety systems we now rely on. AWS, TPWS, GSMR, and more. Not just how they work, but why they had to be built. Let's rewind all the way back to the Armagh disaster of 1889. It began as a Sunday school excursion train climbing a steep gradient just outside Armagh, Northern Ireland. The train stalled on the incline, and in an attempt to assist, the rear portion was uncoupled without securing it. It ran away downhill and collided with another train, killing over 80 people, many of them children. What followed was the Regulation of Railways Act, a moment that defined UK rail safety. It introduced what is now called the lock, block and break principle. Lock is the interlocking of points and signals, so you physically can't give a conflicting signal indication or set a conflicting route. Block is absolute block signalling. Only one train in a physical section of track at any one time. No train can enter till the previous one has left. Brake is continuous automatic brakes. Brakes that are held off with compressed air and automatically applied if that air supply is lost, ensuring a runaway portion of a train still stops. These principles still exist today, just in far more advanced forms. If you're trying to wrap your head around railway design principles like CAN and how it links into track speed and safety, I've got a free guide that breaks it down in plain English. You can download it using the guide below. Fast forward to 1952, Harrow and Wealdstone. A local passenger train was standing at the platform when an express train passed a signal at caution and then a red signal at speed. It ploughed into the back of the stationary train at the station platform. Seconds later, a third train approached from the opposite direction and collided with the wreckage. Over a hundred people were killed and 340 injured. The driver missed the signal, likely due to the dense fog and lack of warning. The problem? There was no in-cab alert system. The response? The Automatic Warning System, or AWS. As a train approaches a signal, magnets in the track trigger a horn and a visual sunflower. Cancel it and you can continue on your journey. Ignore it, the brakes come on. It was a game changer but not a perfect one. In 1997, a Great Western Intercity 125 was approaching Southall at nearly 125 miles an hour. The driver failed to respond to two cautionary signals and passed the signal at danger. The AWS was switched off due to a known fault, preventing any warning passing to the driver. The train collided with a freight train crossing in front of it. Seven people died. Two years later, Ladbroke Grove, a Thames trains service passed a signal at danger shortly after leaving Paddington Station. It collided almost head-on with a high-speed First Great Western service. The crash and subsequent fire claimed 31 lives. In both cases, AWS was installed, but either the warning was ignored, disabled, or simply not enough. The rail industry knew it needed something more, something that could act, not just alert. Enter TPWS the train protection and warning system. Placed at signals, TPWS will apply the brakes automatically if a train passes a red signal or approaches too fast for the stopping distance available. It's not full automatic train protection, which continuously monitors train speed, but it was more affordable and quicker to deploy. ATP was trialled, but proved too costly for national rollout. Signal passed at danger, or SPAD for short, risks never go away so the defences against it keep evolving. Signal sighting committees now assess positions of signals with human factors in mind. TPWS Plus extends TPWS to longer braking distances, adding additional protection for high-speed lines. LED signal heads have replaced older bulbs. They prevent phantom aspects, a visual illusion where ambient light causes an unlit signal to appear illuminated, potentially misleading drivers. None of these make signals impossible to miss, but they all shrink the odds. In 1994, two trains collided head-on near Cowden Station in Kent on a single line section of track. A northbound train passed a red signal and entered the occupied section where it struck a southbound service. Five people lost their lives, including both drivers. The investigation highlighted serious communication failures. 
The driver of the train that passed the signal had no in-cab radio and had to leave the cab to find a trackside phone. Precious seconds in a situation where every moment mattered. The crash accelerated the rollout of cab secure radio, a dedicated link between driver and signaller. This was later superseded by GSMR, a digital encrypted radio system covering the entire mainline network. Today, one button can send a stop message to every train in a control area. It's not just about braking, it's about communicating fast. Not all safety tech is about reacting in the moment. Some systems exist purely to keep the driver alert and accountable. And while not all of them were born from a single headline event, they were each strengthened or adopted as part of the industry's response to serious failings. OTMR, or On-Train Monitoring Recorder, is a train's equivalent of a black box. It records speed, brake pressure, control inputs, and the system's events in real time, allowing investigators to reconstruct accidents accurately. It became mandatory following recommendations from the Ladbroke Grove crash inquiry in 1999, where limited data made root cause analysis harder than it should have been. DRA, the driver's reminder appliance, is a simple red button that disables traction power when engaged. Drivers manually activate it when stopped at a red signal. It's a safeguard against starting away spads, where a driver forgets the signal at danger and moves off. Introduced after multiple spad-related incidents, the DRA is a small but powerful human factors fix, DSD, the driver's safety device, commonly known as the dead man's pedal. It requires regular input from the driver, such as a pedal pressure or control movement. If the system detects inactivity, it assumes the driver has been incapacitated and the brakes are automatically applied. Though not triggered by a single incident, its use was strengthened across the fleets as a baseline protection, particularly in light of fatigue-related risk assessments. These systems may not seem dramatic, but they are fundamental. Each represents a lesson learned, sometimes from tragedy, sometimes from gaps spotted just in time. Quiet layers of protection, but they shout when needed. But the story doesn't stop there. Now we look to the future. Britain is rolling out ETCS level two on routes like the East Coast Main Line. No more line side signals, just digital in-cab movement authority. And the shift isn't just in the UK, it's global. Around the world, the same vision is taking shape. India's Kavach bringing in automatic braking and collision avoidance. Europe's ERTMS, interoperable signaling system, America's PTC, mandates brake applications if overspeed or signal passed. Each system is different, but all try to ensure that the system, not just the human, keeps trains safe. Rail safety doesn't progress in peace, it learns from pain. Armagh, Harrow and Wealdstone, Southall, Ladbroke Grove, Cowden. For each of these tragedies came a safety layer we now rely on. The question is, Will the next layer come from Foresight or the next name on that list? Let's hope we keep building before we're forced to. If you'd like to see more videos like this, diving into the real rail disasters that shaped how we work today, drop a comment and let me know. I'm thinking of turning this into a proper Built on Tragedy series.